Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Tomorrow is opening day. This morning, then I have a great hunt. Deer didn't move like usual. We just got set up in the middle of this bedding thicket. Um, we've been saving this spot for the rut. It's a nice, I think it's a nice buck. It's a 170. That was money. I think he's down right over there. 10 yards. Woo! Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. What's up, guys? Another week, another podcast. This week we have Cameron on from DIY, uh, DIY <laughs> Hunter. Uh, he's got a huge buck that he's been chasing for a few years now. And uh, he's kind of telling us a little intel on that, but not telling us a ton to let people know a bunch. But that's the way we all are. We don't want to give away all our big buck secrets. But the awesome episode, if anybody is allowed to bait in your state, this is an episode to listen to you. There's some next level baiting tips in this episode. Yes. Yeah. We're going to get right into the people that make this possible. We're going to mix it up. We're going to start with Scentlock this time. We uh, had the opportunity to go to Bass Pro and set up an Oz Radio 400B. You guys can actually go into your Bass Pro store and use the item in hand. You can turn it on. You can put it on boost mode. You can put it on cycle mode. You can smell the ozone. You can listen to how loud the fan is. Um, we're actually getting ready to go out in the blind tonight and go after two bucks and the ozone, the the radio is going to be huge mm-hmm. tonight. I mean, it's going to be huge on the ground, out of a blind. Um, decent wind, but if we let anything walk past us, it has a potential to wind us. Right. And he's been cruising with them smaller bucks. So those smaller bucks come through first, and they wind us. I mean, so hopefully we're going to test the radio. It's been good so far, but we're going to put it to a, a, a whole new level. a whole new level tonight. So, All right. Let's get right into Ingram. Uh, if you got any, he doesn't have any bucks in there right now. So if you guys got the chance to put one down, you could probably get a pretty fast turnaround right now. Absolutely. This early in the season. It was cool when I was talking to him. He said bucks don't really start coming to him till like the twentieth, twenty fifth of October. Yeah. So I don't know if there's just it's it's obviously there's more bucks moving at that time, but I wonder if there's also more hunters that are finally like okay. They're it's, starting to move in the morning. It's and, about, yeah, it's about time know, to go out. So. You can hunt morning and afternoon and have a decent chance, yeah. you know, getting to that time. Yeah. So. Ingram's Outdoor Obsession on Facebook. Uh, look him up. He's putting some pics on there. We're going to move right to ECW Calls. Um, they're in River's Edge now. That's in Canton, correct? Canton. Yep. Um, you can go get all of his calls there. Uh, turkeys, the... Every call, the slate, the glass, the three, the copper slate glass combined. Um, you can get a grunt, the grunt tubes there, the five-tone grunt tubes, um, or you can get them through us any custom way you want, or you can get the White Toe Legacy podcast custom grunt tubes and turkey calls. Check out ECW on Facebook. Uh, it's EmbryCustomWoodworking.com. Yeah. Got you covered. Got you covered there. You can check out his work. Uh, does a lot of duck, goose, Anything that you want to hunt and call in, he's got you. You All want right. the lip tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into the VIP, the Veteran Innovative Product. Again, with this week, the amount of bucks that are being put down with the Veteran and does and turkeys is insane, man. Shout out the rival. They just put another stud down mm-hmm. with, with the Veteran. Um Giant buck, split two lose, split threes. I mean, just an awesome deer. Long main beam. Yeah, dude. long main beam. So, shout out Joe for that. That's all the veteran, man. Yeah, nice shooting, man. Veterans putting them down. Uh, another guy, you want to talk about the guy that you... Oh, yeah. That so, just went back hunting? So, I had a buddy, and he, he didn't get a hunt last year. Had a shoulder problem, and then uh, this year he got, his, got a new bow. Uh, asked me, you know, hey, man, where can I get some veterans at? Picked up some ground and uh went out here a couple days ago shot a doe in the neck and i said you shot a doe in the neck with a veteran 
He's like, yeah, the exit wound is pretty big. I said, well, he probably damn near cut her head off yeah. with a veteran in the neck. Was he trying to shoot it in the neck or was it I'm just not, a, I'm not sure. Yeah. I know a lot of people like during shotgun season aim for the neck. Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've never done that before. Me and my brother's both biggest here were shot in the neck. Oh, really? And just yeah. done. Just done. So My dad shot his biggest one in the neck. Really? Done. Yeah. Wow. Well, dad, dad's wasn't as done as yeah. me and my brother's. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, homie's going to hit you with the VIP Veteran Broadhead shout-out. This week's VIP Veteran Broadhead shout-out, we have Aaron Wade, who is currently serving as an Army Reservist on active orders, working as a senior leadership development, and has been serving for five years. So, Aaron, uh, we appreciate you and your service to this country, uh, signing up and doing what you've done for my family, Cody's family, and from everybody here at the Whitetail Legacy crew. Yeah, big shout out to you. Thanks for everything you do for us, making it possible for us to send this podcast every week. New listener, by the way. Oh, nice. Thanks, thanks, Aaron. We appreciate that. Hope you're enjoying. Hope you put down a big boy this year. All right, that's it, right? That's all of them? We yeah. get them all? Man, yeah. look at that. Look how fast we're getting at this. You guys, they, we're, they're finally like, finally, these guys <laughs> are just getting to the nitty gritty. But yeah, check out Cameron. Um, he has all of his Instagram, Facebook, everything where if you want to find him and follow his season, he shouts it out in this episode. Um, me and him became pretty good friends. He's after a big buck and he's been messaging me a lot. And like I said, that's one of the greatest things about podcasting. These, these guys, you know, you can become friends with them. So, uh, oh yeah. I'm, I wonder if you guys heard my dog just barking <laughs> in the background. <laughs> so. All right, here we go. We're getting into the nitty gritty. All right, we got the big buck slayer on the line, <laughs> Cameron Deerfield. Man, your wall What's is up? like it's it's badass, dude. How many you got on that that wall that um, you show in your Instagram? I've and... got six shoulder mounts and two euro mounts. I think. Man, I think that one buck's just so wide. It looks like two or three setting up yeah, there. Yeah, his his wall is full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I shot that deer. Uh, ten years ago this season, actually, I was I was uh, seventeen. When I shot that nice. Place. Nice. That's cool. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on, man. This is going to be fun. There's going to be able to get a lot of intel out for the listeners, so I know they're going to love that. Uh, let's start off. Just introduce yourself. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Tell them, you know, how you like to hunt. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, I'm a father, a husband. Um. I have a passion for chasing whitetails. That's pretty much my entire life right there wrapped in one. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I do a lot of public land hunting, like out of state, um, in state. Um, I, I hunt a lot of private farms, some public, but mostly private farms because I, I say I'm going to hunt public, but then I end up finding a buck that I really, really want and I'll just chase them. Um, but outside of that, man, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I, I shoot bows almost every day and I, uh, think about whitetail. <laughs> Sounds like us, man. Yeah. Hey, big shout out and props to you for the amount of work that you guys have put in on public this year. I've been following you guys and you guys are all over the yeah. place. Even during turkey that's, season, that's you guys funny. were putting in a ton of work. So, Oh, dude, Preston ran the crap out of me in turkey season. Yeah. I'm like, this is nuts, dude. Did, did you make the trip with him <laughs> to Missouri? Uh, I didn't go to Missouri. He went on that one solo. Man, um, dude, he he was out there. Yeah, he was putting in work. Damn. Yeah. All you guys, even with your early season traveling to public ground, I mean, you guys have been putting in a lot of sets already, Some and a lot of hot sets, you know. It's right. Early season. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, that that first weekend, it was like 100 every day, and we, we, like, so out of four days or three days, we sat twice and scouted the whole rest of the time. Dang. So, and, and it was, like, hardcore. Like, I, I was looking at him halfway through it, like, why in the hell are we doing this? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is just too much, man. Yeah. But then, but then you know, after, then you then you walk another fifteen twenty yards, and you find a big saddle, and there's a big scrape sitting, and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, this is where I need to be. This I'm better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Props to you guys. You guys been putting in a lot of work, and it's it's showing through your videos and and your Instagram and yeah. Facebook and stuff. So we're trying, man. I mean, it's I mean, public land is something that's fairly new to me. I haven't really ever had to hunt public my entire life, but it, I'm to, I'm kind of to the point now where. I'm just sick of people saying that private deer are, are easy to kill, so I'm just, yeah, I'm just I making mean, a switch. And it seems I'm like... definitely jumping in. I mean, we've scouted, I think, six different pieces this year. And, I mean, that's hardcore scouting. Like, that's, like, back in January and February, walking six, seven hours a day, nonstop. 
Yeah. You, know, so. you guys do a lot of walking, scouting, like, you know, after season, like you guys are right in there, shed hunting, checking out the oh, sign. Shed hunting is like, I would put shed hunting and killing deer side by side. That's my two favorite things to do. Yeah. I'm the same way. People are like, you're going to, you walked 11 miles today. Cause I do that. <laughs> I do that tracker. So I know what ground I cover. And I'm like, yep. yeah, I pack a lunch. I, <laughs> I do the, It's like my thing during the winter because there's nothing else you can do. Why not go out all day oh, and yeah. be in the woods and shed hunt, you know? So. Oh, totally. And then, like, last year, I was driving myself nuts. I I probably hunted a total of probably seven days and killed two bucks in, in two states, and I was just going stir crazy. So by the time it was shed season, I was ready. You know, I was fine. <laughs> Man, you had, them dial, was, you had them dialed down seven days, two bucks. That's pretty... Mine's well, like 70 what, days, half a buck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, the one I shot here, I could have shot him on opening day and I passed him because I wasn't sure. And then the one I shot in West Virginia, that was kind of just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to chalk that one up to like luck, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That, that's sometimes that's all it takes, man. Be in the right place. Get a little luck. You know? Yeah, totally. I mean, because I went with my buddy and he's hunting down there his entire life and He's never really shot a good buck. And he shot decent bucks down there. And then I went down there. And the first time I went down there, I shot, you know, a pretty, pretty decent buck. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, what else can you say? I you can't really I, say I too much more. That, <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. He was there. I just had to had to send it. But. Yeah, for sure. So something that we want to cover on this a little bit is baiting. Uh, you do a lot of that. That's something that we don't really do in Illinois. We're not allowed to. So that really right. interests us because that might be something that we're able to do in the future. It might be a game changer for us, you know. So I know yeah, you have yeah. some different tactics other than just baiting because a lot of people bait. It seems like they bait like on a field edge and you get a lot of nighttime picks or something. But you get an inventory and your baiting is a little different. So you can go ahead and just hit us with your tips yeah. on baiting. It's, I mean, the, what I want to say about baiting first and foremost right off the rip is don't over bait. And what I mean by that is you'll have these guys who have, say, uh, you know, maybe 80 to 100 acres, and they go put five different piles of corn out there. And it's like, first off, that's not – I mean, yeah, you're going to get deer on camera. Is it possible to kill a good deer like that? 100%. I mean, it's possible to kill a good deer doing anything, you know. But what I like to do is I, I, like, to, I, I like to keep one permanent bait station the entire year. And, and what I do with that is, is I'll, I'll find a buck or two that I actually like or that I, I want to, you know, pattern. And from there, I'll take, you know, a month or two and I'll look at which way he's, he's, he's coming into it, uh, the wind that he's using to, to uh, come into it, the time of day that he's, he's mostly there. Um, and then I'll break it down from there. And then from there, what I'll do is with that and then my shed hunting, um, you know, scouting all shed season, you know, watching them all spring and summer. And then with, with the, uh, choke camp pictures, I find out where he's betting. And this is stuff that I do back in, you know, turkey season. And a lot of people would say, oh, well, those deer change their patterns three, three or four times. Like, yes, some deer do. But what the way that I'm going about things is my goal is to keep these deer where they're at. So by doing so, I find their betting, right? And when I find their bedding, usually a, a big, now I, I hunt in all farmland. So there's not big patches of woods. There's a lot of fence lines, a lot of little patches of woods. So you'll find a, 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 a good buck will probably have four, four to five bedding areas. Um, now, usually they're in a pretty, what I would call a tight spot, I guess. I mean, they're no more than what I find, like four or five, maybe 600 yards. And... What And what I'll do from that corn pile is I'll figure out where, you know, I'll, I'll start backtracking him, figure out where he's coming from, figure out where he's bedding. Once I find that, I set up a, a feed station within 75 to 100 yards of where I think he's bedding most of the time. And I strategically choose that also with what's the easiest way for me to access this. Is, is you know, can I get in here without him knowing that I'm here? Can, you know... Do I have to walk a mile with corn on, 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 on my back or in a, or in a pack? You know, that's all, you know, none of that really affects what I'm going to do other than the wind. Wind is number one thing for me. Um, so from there, you know, you pretty much narrow it. You, you, you find his, you find his favorite bedding spot. Now, 
by putting the corn 7,500 yards from his bed, a lot of people would say that's crazy and he's going to jump him out of his bed every time. Well, you can. You, you 100% can. If, if, if you're not smart, if you don't play the wind right, if you don't know how he's using that bed or when he's using that bed, you 100% can. So make so the, the best thing I can tell you is to make trail cameras your best friend. A lot of people say don't use them. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> I mean, they're, they've, they single handedly been the reason I've killed my last, well, my last buck and the buck I'm chasing now. I mean, it, trail cameras are the reason probably. Um, so going from there back to, back to the bedding by, by putting that seed station 75 to 100 yards away from the bedding, what you're doing is you're making it comfortable for him. Yeah, it's, you know, there's this corn pile that's out in the middle of nowhere. That might stir a buck up, but each buck is different. So you got you got to know how to, you know, how to go about it. Now, by doing that, I, I keep that base station year round also. Well, until I, I killed, I, I killed it, basically. And that just gets him comfortable. That, that gets him staying there. It gets him, you know, where he doesn't have to venture far. And the number one thing that I've found that's helped me is I access my bait piles 100% different through the spring and the summer than I would the day that I go in and go in and actually hunt. And what I'm doing there is these big bucks will get used to a certain way that you're, that you're coming in every single time. And that wind is the wind that those bucks are going to come and, and visit that, visit that, uh, feed. When, when the wind is to, when, when you're walking in and the wind is to, to your back, they're going to smell you. That's the way that, that they're, you know, so your access point is they're downwind from that. They'll always do that. Always. So even if you have to go out of, out of your way all spring and summer to access that, that point differently, then that's what you have to do and get him used to that. Get him on that wind. Then when season rolls around, you use that wind to, to actually kill him. Use the wind that he is using to protect himself to actually kill him. Does that does that make sense, kind of? Yeah, dude, you just blew my mind. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, wow. I that's the, like, we love this podcast because you we get to talk to people like you. We can't bait, but I would never have thought of that. And that is so genius that you're you're using a buck's instincts to pattern you against him. This is mind blowing right. <laughs> that that you're doing that. Like I'm sitting here, like, and I did the, like, the explosion in my hand for like my brain just exploded when you said that to homie here. <laughs> but yeah, that. I mean, it's 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 you're basically setting him up, you know. Yeah. It, you know you you're and like I said, not not there's. I'm gonna say that this works probably. I'm gonna go on record and say it probably works about eighty percent of the time. Man, that's so, awesome. I mean, and I've. And what I've noticed is these bigger bucks, especially in farmland, their nose is, I mean, you, you, you've always heard that, you know, a buck's nose is his best friend. It 100% is true here. I mean, you got to think. Baiting to me is something that is a necessity because I, if I don't bait, every neighbor for 500 miles is bait, you know? So I, I have to bait or else I'm not going to have deer. I mean, you can say there's corn and there's soybeans, but there's corn and soybeans for miles and miles and miles, you know? Yeah, but so, there's not corn and soybeans in secluded cover like, you know, people are putting. Right. Yeah, you know, I have. And it's just, that's like me and homie say, if if baiting was legal here, we'd do it. We have no problem against yeah. it. You know, anything that can help us beat these deer. But uh, a lot of right. people a lot of people and, talk, you know, bad about it or not. But we, we honestly want the knowledge because if it's something that we can do, in future years, because I have spots in mind that I'm like, dude, if we could put a bait pile here and really get the intel and j- just figure out how a buck's using that area. How is he going north to south? Is he using this draw? You know, and just get him right. on video mode. Okay, he's leaving the bait pile going this way. He's coming in the bait pile going this way. Instead of just like us is, oh, he's traveling through there. <laughs> you know? So you're like, okay, now you yeah. got to figure it out. Then you might have to move your camera 15 yards to figure them out a little bit more because you might only get them on camera once every week with a bait pile. You're getting to see that. Okay. The wind was North and now he's traveling a different way out of the bait pile, you know? Yep. So you get all that Intel when, when we, we don't. So 
I mean, and, and it's not really, I mean, that's intel that you're setting yourself up to get, basically. You know, that's not like, that's not normal in intel. Like, like, you're basically trying to go in and alter his, his comfort level, basically. You're, you're trying to trick the smartest thing that's in the woods. And the only way that I know how to trick the smartest thing that's in the woods is by habit. He's going to, he's going to live off my habit. So if I access the same way all spring, all summer, He's going to get used to me accessing from that point. There's a, but that's where the danger is, you know. So when you access from that same point, you're pretty much, I mean, you're you're expecting him to use his survival skills to your advantage, you know. And that's something that it took me years to figure that out. I mean, I'm not even that old, but still, I mean, it took it took me years to figure that out in the sense of, you know. Everybody throws corn piles on the side of a soybean field, and they're getting pictures of this 180 at at midnight. Like, yeah, that's that's cool. He's he's there, but I want pictures at 11 in the day. I want pictures at nine. In the morning. I want pictures at two in the day. I want to see what he's doing, when he's on his feet, why he's on his feet, the weather. I want to see. I let. I don't. The moon phase doesn't bother me a whole lot. Um. I. I'm a, I don't know about it, honestly. I don't have any opinions about that. But the weather and the wind direction are everything. That's, and yeah, that's kind of the way I am. We have a guy coming on that's pretty soon that's going to be talking about the wind or the moon. So I'm excited to get him on to learn more about it because I just don't know enough and I haven't seen it. I haven't. I guess I haven't been like, oh, the moon's messed up, and then seen that there wasn't as much deer activity. You know. Now I can see maybe like the moon affecting deer that like. I don't know, like out west that don't get a lot of like people, you know. Um, but these deer are just they're so there's there's literally a house in every single wood patch. You know, so they're around people twenty four hours a day. Somebody's dog could chase them. Uh you know, somebody could be cutting corn, somebody could be mowing grass. And I don't live like around people like I think like my close neighbor's almost a mile, but still, I mean, that's a mile is not that far, you know. Um but you know, but again, if you get back to that, to, to the feeding and the access, if you get, if, if you can go out of your way all summer and all spring, and even if it is a harder path to take, do it. And you're not going to affect his bedding, do it. Now, that's the hardest thing because you'll find a buck who has four or five different bedding areas and you're like, ah, you know, I got to cross this bedding to even get to there. And by the time I get there, that, you know, that wind is completely wrong. So, you know, and then, you know, so, I don't go in unless it's 100% right, 100% right. And that may be every two weeks. That may be once a week. That may be, you know, I don't let it go past two weeks because, I mean, it's pretty hard not to have a perfect one day within two weeks. But, I mean, you got to stick to your program. got to stick to your program. And not necessarily the day that you come in, but try to keep it around the same time. Uh, try to, you know, and definitely from the same access. Um. Now, once you figure figure a buck out like like that, and you figured out his bed, and you figured out what bed he's using most, um, then I mean, from there, it's almost like, uh, well, let's just hope he stays around till fall, right? Well, by doing that, by making everything easy for him, these big old mature bucks they don't like to move very far because there's danger everywhere. So if you can make him 100 percent comfortable, and you can give him everything he possibly needs right there, he will stay there. I promise you he will. I've seen it a hundred times. It just, the problem is that you don't know the unknown. You don't know if Joe, if Joe from down the street is going to be rabbit hunting or what I love this time of year is the dove hunters that wait until the corn's gone and go butt up right next to your woods and shoot every dove, you know, which nothing against <laughs> dove hunting. I've done it. But when you're trying to pattern deer, it definitely throws a wrench in. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's it's something that you really have to an, analyze if if you want to do because it's it is a process to to really do all this. A lot of guys that I find that talk about baiting uh, say baiting is for is for is for lazy dudes or that it's easy to kill a hundred sixty inch deer on on a uh, on a uh, corn pile. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, man. A big mature buck walks in. He's looking straight up. I've seen it a hundred times. Also, they'll walk right in and. I've seen a big buck literally look around in the tree because they're so used to coming in the corn piles and dudes shooting at them or winding dudes 
or, you know, your, or dudes grunting at them or, you know, there's so many things, you know, and I mean, the buck I'm chasing this year literally watched the deer I shot last year die. He was standing right there beside me. <laughs> so it's like you educate them without even trying to educate them, you know? So if you think you're just going to go dump a corn pile out and you're going to sit 15 feet up this tree and this buck's going to come in and you're going to shoot him, can you guess? Likely, no. And I'm the kind of guy where I like to put all the odds in my favor. I don't want to be, well, maybe I'll kill him. Like, I, I want to kill him. You know, that's that's why I'm putting the effort in. That's why I'm taking corn out of corn bags that are loud, dumping it into my pack, walking it a mile in, and dumping it out of my book bag so it's quiet. You know, um, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's not pulling up on your side-by-side and ripping three 50-pound bags open while, while, while you're swigging a beer. Like, that's not how you do it. That's how I can do, you it. do it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, can you do it that way? 100% it can be done. But, again, it's unlikely. You know, just like hunting all these soybean fields, you think, oh, this, these fields got to be full of 180s and 190s. Like, yeah, they are at midnight. Yeah. You know, you got you to gotta kill them coming to these fields, you know. And that's, it's the same principle. It's the same thing as a, as a, as a food plot, but on a way smaller scale. Yeah. So have you seen um, baiting be effective during the rut? Or is it more um, for an early season tactic? Not really for rut. Um, rut, I mean, as we all know, that's that crazy time. I mean, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen bucks not even touch corn piles, you know, all rut. And there'll be tons, there'll be tons of does there, and you're like, well, if does are here, why the hell isn't there bucks? Mm-hmm. But, and it's, you know, now early November, yeah. But I notice rut don't really kick up here until, I mean, in my area, I've noticed about the third week of November, it gets crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. quite so, a bit later than here. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's like, I mean, that's not saying that there's not deer chasing November 6th. But I'm saying, like, uh, for instance, in 2016, I shot my buck on the 26th, 25th, 26th, 27th. It was right in there. And he was chasing the doe. I watched him fight and everything. You yeah. know, so it's something that, you know, so rut, to me, I don't like rut. I don't like it at all. I like to kill my deer in, you know, early, and I don't even like it. It's not I don't like it. It's a beautiful sight to be up and watch deer running around and all that. But I'm one of them guys who like to hunt deer that I've patterned, and you are not patterning deer during during rut whatsoever. Now, the feed thing, is it better early? Yeah. I don't believe in the law whatsoever. As long as you got a deer pattern, he's dead, you know. Um but there's only about a month gap there where feeding doesn't really do anything for, for, for anybody in my area and, and what I found in feeding period. And that's, you know, during the rut. Now, come December and January, it'll blow your mind. You'll have seven bucks walking at, at, at one single time, but they're starving, you know. Right. There's nothing around. Everything's covered in snow. You know, this is farmland. So once they, you know, yeah, there's, there's leftover beans and corn out there and fields and everything, but your big bucks don't want to be seen. It's two o'clock in the day, standing in the middle of cornfield, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so, well, so we can jump off the baiting for a second. I want to get your opinion on um, what you said your rut is there, as it's you know the third week in November. Are you seeing that like for you know five days? Are you seeing it for two days? Be really intense. Uh, how, how are you seeing that? I've yet to see a. Super, super, I've been hunting this particular farm that, I, well, my main farm that I, I hunt. I've been hunting it for six years now, five or six years, and I've yet to see a super, super intense rut. Um, I've seen, you know, I like, like I said, I've seen young bucks chasing November fifth, sixth, um, you know, all up to the fifteenth, and then then you get in that, you know, from the fifteenth about to the twenty fifth is when I really see it, you know, light up here, and that's when I see the. What's odd is, you know, your, your entire life you've heard, well, your bigger bucks are going to find your does first. And that may be true. I mean, maybe here they are finding them first. But it, maybe they're finding them so early that on that third week, of uh, you know, they're just, they're out fighting again. And they're, and, they're, and they're out looking again. And, you know, so I don't know. Like, it's, it's a lot of things. I, I try not to let what I hear go into with what I know, you know. And like I said, every part of the country is different. Um, 
everything that you learn on podcasts, I feel is very like regional in, in, in a sense of you, you, you have to know what to take from it and what not to take from it, you know? Right. Um, so just from what and, I've, just from what I've heard is, you know, uh, they, you know, they say the rut is, you know, the first uh, week, first week and a half of November, and then it kind of dies down. And then, you know, maybe I was trying to figure out maybe what you were seeing was that second rut when they come back in, which can be more intense if it was, you know, going to be super crazy. But, you know, you said it's not super crazy. So I don't know. That might no, just I mean, be your rut we, out there, you know, just like you said, yeah, it, never, it's more I've regional. Never seen, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen a real, like, you know, a real intense rut. Like I said, that doesn't mean I don't see four or five bucks chasing. You know, that's, but, you know, you see these guys, you know, that talk about, oh, I've seen 17 bucks today and they were on this flat. And it's like, well, where the hell is that at? You know? Yeah. Like, I've never seen anything like that ever in my <laughs> life. But, no, no, you know, no, no. It, but, <laughs> but also, what I do is a little bit different because I'm after specific deer on specific beds. So when I do see a deer, nine times out of ten, it's that deer. You know, like a lot of my buddies will come. I, I, I let my buddies come and hunt, and I, I try to, you know, put them on deer, and they'll get frustrated. Like, well, I've hunted for two days and didn't see anything. That excites me. That means I've been there for two days, and he hasn't been there, so he's bound to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you a know? good way to look at but, it, yeah. You know, and as long as you're not blowing the spot up, as long as you're not in there, which what I found is when you, when you hunt the same spot over and over and over again, um, you know, like say in early season, you'll have 10, 15 does come in and say, okay, maybe one, maybe one will wind you right, right there before dark. Okay. Well, cool. You go back in a week later and you see five, six does. Cool. Well, every time you go in there, you're making somewhat of an impact, right? So by the time rock comes around, your does are already hit to you and they're gone and your bucks are gone. Yeah. You know, so that's something I've never been. I don't hunt spots more than twice my, myself personally. And if I do hunt more than twice, there's like a month gap to where I, I don't I don't go back in. There. But we're also talking about I've got as of right now I've got uh, nine stands set up for one deer and sixteen trail campers. So yeah. I give myself options. You know, yeah, I don't. Sure. You know, and. If if it's not right for me, then I go I go film somebody else, or I I take my son out, or you know my father in law or brother in law, or you know I take somebody out on a complete other side of the farm or on another farm and just get away. Like I have to literally do that to force myself not to go. Out. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and it's sure. like, but that's all part of the process. That's all part of patterning that deer. You know, getting him comfortable. You don't want to do all that work off spring summer for nothing, just to go in there, you know, blow it up. Like that's not what it's about. You know, it's it's about being as strategic as you possibly can, 365 days a year. You're hunting the same bucks all your neighbors are hunting, and you're putting corn piles out just like all your neighbors are putting corn piles out. But you're strategically BNSF. placing these, these corn piles. And another thing I wanted to talk about feeding, don't use feeders in in an area that your neighbors are, are baiting or anything like that. Like, if there's a high baiting, you know, if you're in a high bedding area, don't use feeders. I'm 100% against feeders. And I say that because I've used feeders twice, and both times I didn't have a big buck at all, ever, on on, on that camera, not, not once. Because they're walking in knowing what it is right off the bat, you know? So you'd rather have they, a pile than a feeder, is what you're saying? 100%. I pour all my, all my corn. Now, what I try to do is find, like, a dead stump, you know, or something like that, something that's hollowed out. Uh, that's more ideal or find like a dead log or, I mean, if I have to, I'll pour it right there, you know, right on the dirt. I mean, literally I don't, I don't, I'm not out there pouring two, 300 pounds of corn. I, I mean, they're not, it's not going to sit there and mold, you know? Um, but you know, and, and you gotta be smart about it. Don't put it on soil that's wet all the time. You know, that's going to mold. Don't, you know, don't put it in open areas. That's probably going to, you know, mold, you know, but where I'm going is where these bucks are bedding and it's thick. I mean, like, you know, the uh, tomorrow season opens up here, and the spot that I'm hunting, I've got my furthest shot is 15 yards, and I've got probably a 12-foot window. You know, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm right in their bedroom. I mean, I, the thickest, gnarly stuff you can find, that's where, that's where I'm at. That's where my bait pile is at. And I'm not hunting right on the bait pile nine times out of ten. I'm, I'm hunting his, his travel. 
you know. So if I have a corn pop 75 yards from him, I'm actually taking a risk putting my stand about 50 yards, you know, maybe 40 yards from it at times. I've even done that. Like the the, uh, the buck I shot last year, the, he, no doubt he was 70 yards from me the whole time. From the time I walked in and everything, he was there. You know, when he got out of his bed, he had the other buck with him too. And when they got out of their bed, you know, they, they started on their on, on on their journey, and then that ended with with him dying. <laughs> but you know that that's another thing. You know, you can't just sit on top of this corn pile and ex, you know expect even even if you're doing it this way and being strategic about it and going in and, and close to their bedding and you know using the same access, being smart as you can. He knows what that is. He knows, hey, there's a pile of corn here. You know, like. This just doesn't happen, <laughs> you know, and he, he knows his area enough to know what's going on, you know, but at the same time, all the neighbors are doing it. You're just making him more comfortable than what the neighbors are making. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to go far. He doesn't have to go to the neighbors because he's comfortable in his little, his little, you know, two, I, I, like the buck I'm chasing right now, he's got a two to 300 yard radius. That's it. He's got four bedding areas, 300, four and a three, 400 yard square. Yeah. So yeah, you keep uh, you keep talking about this buck from this season. And I just I want to get into this. I'm I'm Jones and Ford. <laughs> I, I've I've been privileged to see the picks. Uh, I know no one else will be able to. So that sucks for you guys. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, let's, hopefully hopefully tomorrow before dark I got a uh, uh, kill photo. Oh, that's gonna <laughs> be sick. sick. Yeah, I hope so, dude. I'm gonna be antsy all day waiting for a text to let you know know how it went. But um. You've been hunting him for four years, right? Uh, this one was three. My three. last one was three. Years. Okay, so you've been hunting him for three years. Um, yeah. Well, hunting him. Well, I've watched him grow for three years. We'll say. That. Okay. So let's talk. Let's talk about this buck a little bit. Let's talk about. So you had an encounter with him when you shot your buck last year. Um, yep. And then, how do you have an age? You think this deer is? Uh, he's he's five and a half. I didn't shoot him last year because he was four and a half, and he just had everything that I would ever want from a deer. I mean, don't. He would have been my biggest bow kill. He was bigger than the deer I shot. Um, but, you know, I shot a, I shot a six and a half year old that I had sheds from. And, you know, was, it was my biggest archer buck up, you know. And, you know, I, I did what was unthinkable, I guess, because I hunt. I mean, there's three, three, four, four other guys that, that actually hunt this land. And, uh, so I'm hunting a, a very pressured buck, like very pressured buck. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I opted out not to kill him last year. Um, the buck I did shoot, I, I actually passed on opening day because I wanted to get a good look at the, at the other one, and then boom, they both walk in at the same time. Man, that's and, a tough decision, uh, huh? You're like, well, I'd probably oh, shoot man. the older one too, and just give that. If I knew I could hunt there next year, I'd probably shoot the older one and say, "Man, I want to let you, I'm going to let you go. You better blow up and you better walk by <laughs> me next year." <laughs> yeah, and that's so. definitely the first time. But, I mean, I'm just now getting comfortable with bow hunting to do that, you know? Um, but I did it because, you know, you hear all these guys, you know, that, you know, and since I was, since I was a young boy, I've been watching all these shows and all this, and they, you know, I want to kill a big deer, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, so the one I shot last year is 153 inches, I'm not saying that's not a big deer because that's a giant, you know, that, and anybody's standard, that's a big deer, but, to me, I, to me, a big deer is like 175 plus, you know? So I've always wanted that. So I knew right, going into to last season, I knew that it was going to be crazy, crazy, crazy season because it was going to be the most trying season I ever had. And then here they both walk in at the same time. It's like, are you shitting? Me? Like, is this really happening? To me? <laughs> and then, uh, so anyways, I, I pull my bow back on him actually. And put it on him, and I counted the three, and I uh, did the uh, old uh, Indian kill, <laughs> and acted like I killed him. And then I saw the buck I shot put his head down. I turned and shot him, and then uh, I actually saw the deer I'm chasing now, which his name is Papa. Um, I saw him three more times that that season while I was hunting with with other people, and then in the other season I was hunting, trying to shoot a doe, and of course I saw like eight bucks, not one doe, <laughs> and. Uh, he was, he was one of them. And I was in my, I was on a field. <laughs> it was snowing and he just come out there and had a jolly old time. I mean, probably an hour, hour and a half. 
And, uh, I mean, he, so then after that, I watched him and he didn't shed until real late. And I was looking for sheds and trying to find him, trying to find him, trying to find him, couldn't find him. Well, I got word that the, that one of the neighbors down the road found him. So that kind of had me a little bit shook, a little bit worried. And, uh, it didn't work out that I, I tried, I tried to get those sheds and, it, and he wanted to be a dickhead about it. So. That didn't turn out real good. And then, uh, but he said if I kill him, then he'll give me his shit. So there, there's always a plus. There spot. you go. Yeah, that's cool. I got the same situation going on right now. But he wasn't dickhead about <laughs> yeah, it. I would say no dickhead there. Yeah, I wasn't a dickhead <laughs> about it. I just said, you found him. If I kill this, oh, this deer, deer, I want like, the sheds. This deer was like, if you want these sheds, it's going to be like 500 bucks. I'm like, are you shitting me? <laughs> wow. I'm like, all right, cool, man. I mean, and he was probably 155, 100, high 150 last year. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he had everything. I'm obsessed with tents. Obsessed with tents. I've got five of them mounted. Um, a ten point is like when I was a little boy. That's all I ever wanted to kill. So that's kind of like just kind of carried over from that. And uh, he was almost a ten last year, which was kind of the deciding factor. Um, he wasn't quite a ten. And then, uh, yeah, that that whole season played out, man. And I was, you know, and then. Uh, I didn't find a shed and I didn't see him on camera for like from January, I think. No, from February to April. And then boom, I got this truck and picture of this deer. And I was like, that's him. Has to be. Like, There's no other deer around here that, 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 that could be. And April 5th, I think was the first picture I got of him. And I've got a picture of him every day since then. Jeez. And it's been an ongoing battle. I've shifted so many times. He's, changed up on me he's very uh nomadic he's not he's not the most pattern like pattern like i'm really not say he's not as easy to pattern as any other deer i've ever hunted he, he's very uh i don't even know he's he's not careless by any means it's almost like he's like a mad mad scientist because there is there is reason to his madness but there's a lot of a lot of madness <laughs> and uh this is getting deep but yeah man i <laughs> I've been on this journey since uh, April, every day, all day, thinking about him. Yeah, it's that me and, me, and, me and Ryan were just talking about that. It's like you get a bug in daylight, and you're like, okay, I got this thing figured out. And then he don't show up for seven days or something. You're like, what? What? How? You get a couple days in a row, and then he doesn't show up. You're like, man, these, I don't know if they, like, they're, they're definitely being safe, but I don't know if they're like, ah, I'm going to lay down here today. And they just, you know, they just... Find a oh, nice yeah. secluded spot. They're like, I'm gonna try this out. You know, it's got I got the wind, and they try that out. It's just so hard to get on them, but yeah. I mean, and he's. I mean, what's weird is like, you know, all spring and all summer, early summer, everybody's like, man, he's gonna leave if he's there now. He's leaving. You know, and all the time I'm just smiling. Like, nah, I promise you, he's not. And he didn't. I mean, he has He his pattern was crazy, 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 crazy until month ago, and now it's like, bye. He's dead. <laughs> I've, I've got him, you know, and it's... Oh, I'm so jacked. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I can't I even mean, imagine being you right now. I'm so oh, jacked dude. just sitting here listening. Oh, dude. Well, like I said, I was at work today, and it was like noon, and I'm just like, I can't even stay here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. You know, but it's like... I don't know. This deer, to me, is what I've dreamed of my entire my entire life. Um, it's not like he's some world record deer. He's, not, he's nothing like that. Um, but he's everything that I want, you know, uh, everything I've ever dreamed about killing all wrapped up in one And you know, my, uh, my, uh, wife named him. Um, I just had a daughter this year. Um, you know, I mean, it, it it's like, you know, so it's, this year kind of is like my thank you to my, to my wife and my, and my family for, cause my wife, man, she puts up with some shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, cold dinners every night. All I mean, she hears more about deer than probably anybody should even want to hear about deer. And it's like, you know, every time I come in the house, you know, and I'm frustrated or I'm happy or anything, she sees every emotion and deals with everything. So, like, mad props to her. I mean, she's uh, definitely the. I mean, she's the reason that I keep doing what you know, what I'm doing because she allows me. You know, I'm not saying that I have a wife said so you can do this or that, but you know, she doesn't stand in the way of, of deer hunting. And I, and you know, outside of deer season, I'm doing everything she wants to do. But once deer season comes, you know, it's definitely, definitely it's good. Now time. I take that back. Now, the last couple hours of every evening is mine. 
<laughs> I'm, out, I'm out I'm out glassing and doing it but you know it's you know it's a whole process man and it's something that you know you have this is a definitely a lifestyle you know I you know I'm 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 into a lot of things music uh building cars all type of stuff and I've literally given everything up just to do this because this eats up all my time you know and it's like you know and I don't have to just find deer for me. I find deer for my, for my father-in-law, my brother-in-law. Now I got a son who's seven. I'm putting him on a deer that's nine and a half years old that I have, I have five years of history with. He's the first person I'll ever meet that has killed a deer older than him. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's sweet, yeah, that dude. Is sweet. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Like I tell homie, so hoping, we were, I was talking to him. I said, dude, I don't do anything but deer hunt. I have no toys. I don't do cars. Yeah. I watch zero sports. I don't. I haven't watched a baseball, football, any game at all all year. All I do is deer. You know, twenty four seven, three sixty five. That's what yeah, I do. I mean, I don't. I don't watch sports. I mean, I don't drive a big nice truck. I don't do anything like that. But you know, I mean, I I lease and hunt nineteen hundred acres here. So that's my that's my 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 splurge money. That's what I spurge on. And, you know, and you, you start hunting that much and you got, you know, all these tree stands and trucks. I mean, the money I spend on trail cameras alone is probably sick. All right. But I, I, if the winds are, you know, if, if, if I got a buck that I'm patterning, I'm going to buy as many cameras as it, as it takes. And some people are like, well, you only need, you know, one or two or three. Well, yeah, maybe, but I want to find out everything. No, nah, we got five on you know? 45 acres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's and, and, and that's another thing I really want to share is when you find a property and it comes to baiting and it comes to patterning deer, the one farm that I hunt is like 1,200 acres, I think, just by itself. On 66 acres of that farm, I've shot, I shot deer in 2016. I shot deer in 2017. So it's finding, you know, you can have millions of acres, but unless you find that's, you know, that area that really, that, really attracts a good mature buck, has everything he needs. You know, number one thing that I find that helps me hunt big deer is creeks. creeks? Especially in farmland. You said creeks cre- are their highways, creeks. man. You know, and it's because here, the creeks, nine times out of ten, the creek is a lot lower than everything else. So all the wind in there is like a giant wind tunnel. You know, so they can literally walk a whole property through this creek, you know, given, given, given the wind. And literally sent the entire property. You know, so out, outside of that, I mean, it's you got it. You got you got to try to have everything. Um, water. You got to try to have food. You got to try to have cover. You got you know. So when when you narrow down all this, try to narrow it down to an area that is what what you think is a big buck habitat, or what you know as in, in your in, in your area what a big buck is going to use and how he's going to actually use it. You know. Um, it's, I mean, like, like I said, it's very, uh, regional. You'll, a lot of these steps you can, you can use and a lot of these steps you're going to have to, I don't, I don't have answers for, for you because it's something you're going to have to do, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, as long as you keep your access right, as long as you, as long as you pattern a buck and listen, patterning a buck can be the most stressful. I mean, you guys know it can be the most stressful thing you've ever done in your life. But I promise you, if you stay at it and you're smart about it, you will figure them out. It's just a matter of time. And whether it takes you having notepads and notepads and notepads of paper, I mean, now they have apps and stuff. But I'm I'm a I'm a freaking I'm a freaking notepad guy. You know, I like writing down stuff. And if you have all this, you know, you basically have them dead in the palm of your hand. You just have to do all the math. You know, and when it comes down to that, I mean. If you're holding the answers right there, then why aren't you killing? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say I'm a I'm a notepad guy, and then you know I'll, I'll plug it into where I need to plug it in. But just like you said, man, trying to pattern a mature big buck, it's hard. And then you know even here in Illinois, we can't bait or do mineral or anything. So just like you know, Cody's told you before we hit the record button. I mean. He's just traveling through, so you know we're hitting, we're, we're put, we're plugging in the wind, we're plugging in the barometric pressure. You know, we don't know anything about the moon, so we can't do anything with that. <laughs> but yeah. you know, just you know, the temperature drop. Did we get a cold front? You know, 
we're plugging in, and I don't know how many times I told Cody this month. I'm just like, these damn deer, you know, and we just kind of get to a dead end, and but then, I mean, but then and, we just keep going, you know. You, yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. It's something that you learn every year, like getting with Preston and hunting all this public land and stuff. I, I bought me a complete mobile setup, which has changed my entire outlook on how I kill these deer. If anything, it's made me more confident. And even all my private pieces, I'm packing it. I'm packing the stand sticks. In. I'm not leaving hardly any sets. Um, I got four or five sets that are just true good sets that I leave. I check on every single year. If I need a fresh stand up, I'll do it. But most of the time, I just have trees prepped. You know, and now you know now that I can you know because being mobile to me has changed has changed my entire game. I'm just like, oh man, I, I could be deadly like this. You know, and even on private land, it's not it's not foolish to go in pack and stand in because who knows. I mean, you're not there all the time. Yeah, your camera might, might pick him up once every two days at 2 o'clock. But that don't mean that he's not walking behind that camera. But that don't mean that he's not 40 yards up. For you. Right. You know? So being able to be mobile, I feel like putting all your eggs in one basket and hanging a stand in the summertime, it's not a bad idea, but it's not. I'm just now learning it's not the most effective way for me. You know? And so being being mobile is definitely... I would suggest that to a lot of people. And I would suggest it, doing it early so you can work all the kinks out as you're working out all the other kinks. And then once one day it's just going to click and you're going to be like, oh, oh shit, I'm, I'm actually holding a 150 inch deer. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you're not saddle hunting, are you? Uh, no. So I'm definitely going to uh, give, it, give it a try uh, next year. It's just, this is my first year of self filming and everything. And it, so I didn't want to bring too many new things into, you know, all into the program. But, um, and we just now started really researching saddles, um, and filming like how to film out of saddles and stuff like that. So it's something that we didn't really jump on this, this year, but next year, I think hundred percent, we're definitely, we're definitely trying. Right on. It sounds very interesting to me. And it sounds it, just like you said, it can, it can be very deadly, especially from the people that I've heard. And, yeah. you know, very lightweight packing in, you know, all you got to do is pack in, you know, three, maybe four sticks. But, man, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it, I don't know because I haven't done it, you know. Um, yeah. You just got to be open-minded about it, I guess. Try it out and see how it is. And like you said, you know, work oh, yeah. out the kinks. Be sure you get a good system down that works for you before you before you exit, you know. 100%. And, like, my best advice is if you're going to try something new for a season, buy it in April and practice your butt off all spring, all summer, you know, until you're confident with it. Because, you know, these, these guys on, on YouTube and everything make, make this mobile hunting look so easy. And it sucks, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, when you're, when you're, when you're hunting public and you're walking a mile and a half in and you got 50 pounds, it's like, what am I doing? Like, I, I'd rather have a donut. <laughs> i hear you brother i'm right but there it's with like, you what, it's like what in the world but then you know once you start getting this rhythm down and you learn how to actually hang you, you actually hang you uh hang the sticks around uh or, or you know on on your shoulder and you can actually take the sticks off as you go up the tree and your stand's already there you know you take it off your back and you can you know once you get your system down it's like oh okay but the packing in and out is still not fun I don't know. I mean, you're never going to figure that, that out unless you just, you know, are on beast mode all the time. But <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It, the extent tough. that we go to, to kill a deer, you know, packing in a mile oh, and, and then just the obsession of every, like you said, it's an everyday deal. Like my, I, I get Moultrie mobile pics on my phone. I just stop everything I'm doing. If I'm driving, I just stop. And like, I got to look at them. <laughs> I mean, I just got to look at yeah. them right there. It's like, I got to see what's going on. And then it's normally like blanks, tree branch, squirrel. Yeah. I'm like, man, <laughs> got me all jacked. Dude, Onyx, Onyx has changed the game for us, honestly. I mean, Onyx got us. I mean, now you can't see everything from a map. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, it's fairly good, man. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we've, we've walked into two some spots and was like, this is exactly what, what we expected. And we walked into two some spots like, what the hell happened to the picture? You know, like. That's not that's not what it, what it's supposed to be, but you can't see a lot from you know from 
the from you know above you can't see how thick it is or how tall the weeds are or anything like that you know like for instance we scoured this place in january um and left cans and stuff Preston went back like i don't know a month and a half ago and he was gonna run and check the cans and he was like dude this i need like i got lost He's like, we have pins on Onyx where our cameras are, and I still got lost. That's how much different, you know, and it's just 100% different than what it looked like in January, like yeah. scary different. Yeah, that's you know? like my property, so, man. You go into it now, you're like, man, this is a jungle. How do you even shoot in it? But then November, January, I think it's open, you know what I mean? It's just there's just so much yeah. undergrowth that loses leaves, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, and that's, and that's another thing going back to the bedding is you're going to have to learn – how to use that bedding for what time of year you think you're going to actually have you have your best shot at that deer. If you, I mean, if, if, if he's bedding in the spot and say you walk in that spot in November and it's wide open, like he's probably not bedded there still, you know, it, it's, it's, it, that's a, that's a, a huge thing that I, I talk about. Like, yeah, they are home bodies and they will stay in, they will stay in the actual area, but, even if they have to change their bedding 40 yards to go bet on the stick fence line, as opposed to where they were betting a month ago, they will do that, you know? So yeah. you, you've got to be, you've got to be on top of that also. Yeah. So what I like to do is when I find a bedding area that I know Buck's using, he has cameras 360, you know, all, all the way around him on, on every major path, you know, and every, every bedding area is like that. And, and I know, what time he's coming into that bedding area, what direction he's coming in. And then I, 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 I'm still back, you know, I'm still going back and I'm still, you know, okay, well, if he's, if he was better here and now he's coming from this way, then this is the only spot he could be, he, he could possibly be. It's the only spot. And that might be where two fences meet out, in, you know, 400 yards, you know, way out in those cornfields. But that's where he, that's where he's comfortable. That's where he can lay, watch, you know, watches, watches, uh, watches, uh, back trail and everything. Cause that's number one thing, you know, that's, you know, that's an unspoken thing there, but like they are watching their, you know, back trail, which is another thing when you're feeding close to bedding, use that to your advantage, yeah. you know, be smart enough to know how he's going to use that wind. If he's, if his back is, is towards your corn pile, you can get a little touch closer. And if, and if you go in on, 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 on windy days or going on rainy days and the wind just happens to be, be perfect, that much better you know and if you're going to hang a stand make sure it's make sure it's definitely raining i'll go out there and freaking it on you know it does it that part doesn't bother but you have to be smart man because these big bucks the first thing that they that they see that's wrong or they see that isn't right in in their eyes like what they're not used to they're done i've, I've completely seen them just shut off and you're like where the hell did he go you know, yeah. I've seen that. Now, that was earlier. That was in my earlier years. Of just trying to see. When I was about 21 or 22, I completely forgot everything that my father and my grandpa taught. It, it was working, but it wasn't working the way I wanted to. So I completely turned to podcasts and turned to listening to people, YouTube. And, and, I, and you know, and, and I became a way different deer hunter than what I, than what I, I even used to be. I even, and I'm better. I'm not saying I'm the, I'm this you know, God, God's gift to deer hunting, nothing like that at all, but I'm 10 times the hunter I was back then, you know, and if there's anything that I've learned, it's that you have to be smart 365 days a year. As much as you want to take your, as much as your buddies are over there and you're hanging out on Saturday night and you're like, hey, you want to go and check this camera? Don't do it, you know, because your buddy's sitting there something that they're not used to. I've, I've actually... I've yet to prove it or anything like that, but I think these deer get used to, you know, used to the, used to you. And, and what, what I mean by that is the person who's bringing in the, the bait and the person who's hunting there. I almost feel like these deer kind of get used to that, you know, and they almost have to because the wood patches are so small here and everything else. And, and they're still here. Like if you're in a 15 acre wood patch and you go, you go to your, to your, uh, or your camera or whatever your feet your feet pile and you check it and he was just there you know an hour ago he's probably still in that same wood patch. yeah you know so it's and it's and as long as you keep your access smart as long as you keep all that smart you know and and, and you know your wind and it, like i said the day doesn't matter you don't have to go in there every monday 
but you try to keep it around the same time of day. Yeah, he don't know, know what day like, it is, I, but he knows what time it is, you know. He don't know if it's a like Wednesday, I, I, but. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously you let your cameras tell you what that time is going to be. If you, if you got him on camera at 2 o'clock every single day, don't go in there at, at 1. Hell, don't even go in there before 2. You know, I would go in there. If he was on camera every day at 2 o'clock and it was the only time he was on camera, I'd go in there about 4.35. Yeah. I'd wait until he was in. I wouldn't go before. And, you know, it's like, okay, like, for instance, that last trail cam picture I sent you, he was in there an hour and 20 minutes before I was. Yeah, he was there, you know, broad daylight. Yeah. Stand the same, stand in the same spot I was standing. I mean, and that's kind of, you know, that, I mean, that gives me goosebumps. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, but it's there, that's the way it is. And, and it's okay to, you don't want to cut it too, too close, but you know, you're also playing, you know, your time against, you know, you know, the, the, uh, clock, your, your, your schedule, if you got kids and, you know, you're playing that, you're playing that whole role too. So I, I get that role, but you still, no matter what, you gotta be smart 365 days a Oh yeah, yeah, man. Your your baiting game is next level, like you say on here. This there's a a lot of we haven't even covered half the stuff we wanted to cover. We're getting into an hour now. Um, what we're gonna do is when you shoot this giant buck tomorrow, we'll just <laughs> we'll just have you on the podcast like on Wednesday or something. <laughs> when you well, shoot I'm that, definitely yeah. like the, I definitely like the uh, confidence. Yeah, when you shoot that big buck tomorrow, then we'll have you on like Wednesday, Thursday, and then we'll get the full story right firsthand right off the bat. So, but oh, hey, man. Uh, pressure, but, pressure. But before we let you go here, um, j- just what you said here a few seconds ago, um, you know that big buck is standing right where you were, but you're an hour and a half after him, and it kind of gives you goosebumps. Uh, do you kind of get like that, you know, just on a regular card pull or like, you know, you, you check a, a cam in a different spot and you know, you got a giant standing there. Cause I kind of get like that. Like when I see a picture, I'm just like, I just kind of look at the spot. I'm just like, dude, there was a, there was a mega giant standing right there, you know, in broad daylight. Yeah. And it just kind of gives me goosebumps or like if, if I find a shed, I'm just like, this deer was literally standing right here. And it's just kind of a surreal deal to me for, you know, 10, 20 seconds, just kind of, you know, taking it in that a deer was standing right here at one point in time. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I find myself doing that more so with deer that I'm after. And I am I have a, I kind of have a switch, man. Like, I got uh, my biggest deer at this point is 153 inches. I've got a 160 on camera this year. I've got a deer pushing 170 on camera this year. I've got two deer that's probably 155 and i'm not even looking at them you know but it's because i'm after one and once i get my mindset on one deer that's when i start really getting into it that's my thing just picking out that one deer finding out everything about him and literally walking into his living room and out smart that's I got, what gives me good yeah i got that <laughs> going on when i get a card pull of him i get just super jacked but I'm at that point now. If a mid 140s come by with a bow, <laughs> <laughs> I can't not send it. You know, right. I got it. If I, once I shoot one, then I'm cool with waiting. Then I'm like, okay, you know, I shot a nice buck this year. You know, got the another experience. You know, putting one down. Now I want to wait for the big dog. But if I, you know, maybe if I wait, you never know what would happen. But it's just hard to wait for that one deer. So props for you, man. Props to you. You got it well, going on. I mean, we're in a we're in a uh, oh. Uh, we get one buck tag. So it's oh, like, yeah, man, that's so hard. You know, it's like, do you want to, you know, and I'm going to tell you, man, if it wasn't for the deer I was chasing, I wouldn't be passing. You know, it's, it could be open day. And if that one and seven, that deer pushing 170 inches, walk in front of me, I'll pass. And I've never even killed a deer that big, but I have to, because I'm after the one. I put wow. so much work into me. You know, I put so much work into him that I have, you know, that's, that's what, that's what I do. You know, that's what, that's what I want to do. That's what hunting is to me. I don't kill big bucks for nobody else but myself. I guess it would just go back to me. If that was me, I guess it would just go back to how confident. Don't get me wrong, man. Like, up until two years ago, I was exactly like that. Like, any big buck on camera, like, holy shit. Like, you know, and I was pumped. 
And now it's like, it's, I still get excited because I put other people on deer and I still, you know, those deer are my deer for the next year and the year after and, you know, so on and so on. But like, you know, like I got, I got a, a three-year-old right now that's 140, I'm probably 140, 145 inches, you know, and that's, I'm calling it like, you know, I told Preston, I'm like in, in 2020, if he's still alive, he's mine, you know, because he has everything that I want. You know, I won't let, I won't let anybody shoot him. And, if, and when I get pictures of him, I get jacked because I know what he's going to turn into, you know? Yeah. So it just, I, there's a certain romance, I guess, in the lack of better terms in the way that I, I go about my, the way I like to deer hunt, which a lot of people do. A lot of people like finding that one buck and hunting him down until he's dead, you know? And to me, it's like, it means the world to me, man. Like last year when I, when, whenever I shot that buck, I just literally sat in my stand and cried like a baby for like five minutes. Cause my entire, I've been bow hunting, you know, this is my 17th year, uh, deer hunting. And I've been bow hunting since I was 12, I think. So my entire life led up to that one moment. It was my biggest buck, mm-hmm. you know? And it was like, that's everything to me, you know? And then it's like, that's why I deer hunt. To pick one deer out and go, all right, it's me and you. Like, you better have every, you better have your A game because I'm bringing mine. And it's like, it's like, it's like a battle to me, <laughs> you know? And it's like, who can outsmart who? And once I get to that, once I find a deer that I can do that with and I, and I want to do that with, that's what gets me jacked. You get that's obsessed with them. Yeah, I'm obsessed with one, man. You get obsessed with them and then people are like, what are you passing these deer for? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. and then last because year, like, you're, last God, year just... my buddy wanted to shoot the deer on after this year. Mm. And like, and like, I was, you know, and I was like, dude, I can't, you know? And then like, I ended up, you know, I ended up like losing a couple friends over, over, over this deer because I wouldn't let them hunt it or that, or they thought I was being selfish. And it's like, dude, I put the time in, you know, that's, I've been watching that deer since he was two and a half, you know, he, you know, he, that's what I want, you know? So, and I was offering them 140s, 150s, and they're mad because I didn't offer them that. Wow. And it's like, sign me on, up. Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> How much is an Ohio? Yeah, yeah what's the fee here? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's almost the, it's, you know, it's almost like you kind of attract who you are. And I attract, you know, I'm attracted to dudes that, not in, not in a homo way, but, you know, <laughs> I'm attracted to guys that like chasing big deer. And, if I like, you know, and, and so if they walk into a farm, they're going to hunt the biggest, fast deer there, just like I am. That's why I don't get in leases with anybody because all the guys that I, that I talk to at deer hunting, all my buddies are just as diehearted as, as, as I am. So I don't get into leases with, them, you know, because we're both going after the same deer and I don't, I don't like that. Not that I think you can kill him before me. I, I hope you do. But this, I'm not going to put all my effort into the same deer you're putting all your effort into. And then once he's dead, then then what? You know? And it's, I'm going after the biggest, baddest one around. That's what I want. Not for anybody else, just for me. Because it, it's, it's, it's proven to myself, like, hey, you outsmarted the oldest, biggest deer that you, that you have. You know? And that's, no, well, not the oldest. I have that, I have that one deer that's nine and a half. It's been a solid 130 for like five years. This rack hasn't changed at all. But, um, it's just like, I don't know, man. You find that one deer that you really, really want, and that's what it's about. You know, that's what gets me going. And, I mean, that's like somebody walking into your house and, you know, taking you hostage. You know, nobody's coming in. And, 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 you know, that's the way I feel about it. You know, this is my this is my domain. I'm smart enough to know there ain't nobody coming in. And he thinks like that. That's his domain, and you're walking right into him. And the best, the best quote I've ever heard in my life was, "You have to literally, you have to literally surgically remove them from the face of the earth." And that's what that's what you're doing. <laughs> I like that, I mean, hey, right? You know, I, I forget who said that, but I, I heard it on a podcast. He said, "You surgically remove them from the face of the earth." And with a big mature buck, that's what you're doing. It's it's a game of strategy. It's a game of of what you, what you've known and what and what you're willing to learn, you know. So you've got to be open. You've got to be open to new things. Don't be afraid to ask. You know, all these pro hunters on Instagram and all that stuff. I've asked them tons of questions, and most of them answer. Some of them don't, but most of them do. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, if you've never hunted a 180 inch deer before, talk to somebody who does hunt and has killed. 
you know, that's, you got to open yourself up. It's all about how bad you want, you know, and that's what it all comes down to when, when it comes from how much work you're going to put in to killing him. How bad do you want, you know? Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's good. I think that's a good way to wrap this up. I got one what? last question. What? Uh, have you ever done any video mode on your drill cams? Any what? Video mode. On camera? Yeah. Yeah, I do actually. Um, not a whole lot. I'll be honest with you. Um, but I do. And the reason I don't do a whole lot is because I don't really, I don't care to sit there and watch you eat, eat corn for five minutes. <laughs> right, I can tell yeah. by, I mean, I can tell by picture. Now, if it's on a scrape, 100% video mode. But that first picture is going to, I mean, we have good enough cameras that that first picture is going to tell me what direction that, that, that he's coming from. You know, so the video mode, and it's always kind of scared me a little bit because I've always been afraid of deer, like, hearing the camera run or something. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's all, like, even when I put batteries in, 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 in my cameras, like, everything goes in, into my closet and ozonics all the way my cameras my, my my batteries everything and it's like you know that might not make a lot of sense to people but i i believe that these bucks if, if say you just take nachos and you put a camera and you put batteries in your camera and go hang your camera up a bucks probably gonna smell that yeah you know so it's like i don't you know i'm very weird about that like i you know if you walk in if you walk up to me in the woods you probably think i just like murder somebody because i got like rubber gloves on and you know <laughs> I'm, I'm all bundled up, you know. I'm, I I cover up too whenever I go in, whether it's summertime or not. I wear, you know, I got an old uh, uh, sweatshirt that I wash, you know, once once a week, and this, and the same old and the same old pants and the same pair of boots and everything, and that's what I use every time all summer long. You know, that's just it's just to me if, if my arms are sweating and I'm walking in and they're rubbing on leaves, I'm leaving scent. You know, so I. I, I might as well just sweat under a jacket and not get sweat everywhere. Yeah, you know, so that's that's another thing that I that I do. That's probably you know, it's it, you know, it's all about what you what you want, and and it's all about what you think works. You know, and it may that might not even have anything to do with anything, but in my mind, it's something I've done and, it, and it's worked. So I'm just gonna keep that. There you go. Yeah, like we say, hunt your hunt, and if it's working for you, you keep doing it, man. But I'm so exactly. jacked for you to get out there and get on this buck. Um, whether you see him, you shoot him, you don't shoot him, you know, uh, I need a text message. Let me know. I'm going to yeah. be antsy tomorrow. Oh, well, I mean, you've done, you've done open the door, so you're probably going to get daily texts. No, I told, that's I perfect, told my, man. Yeah, please. I told my wife, I'm like, I'm not going back to work until, until I go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a good game plan. I love that. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks but, for spending uh, yeah. a couple hours or hour and a half here with us we can't thank you enough we could have made this a three hour long podcast like as i sent you those show notes i'm like man we might cover one of these we might cover all of them but this this how it flows but we uh we appreciate yeah, I mean, you coming I mean, on I, man. yeah i mean definitely it was it was definitely fun bro. thanks all right yeah just so people can find you and uh you know if if they're they're big and baiting and they want to get some more intel from you where where can they find you at um, my, I'm on Instagram, um, Cameron underscore DIY Hunter. Um, you can also look up DIY Hunter on, uh, Instagram. Uh, we're on YouTube. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, I think we're on Amazon Prime. No, oh, nice. So, uh, yeah, um, DIY Hunter, um, that's, that's a group I'm part of, but yeah, we, uh, we're on Instagram. Um, go ahead and give us a follow and, uh, it, um, if, if anybody has any questions or anything, I mean, I'm, I, I love talking, I love talking deer all the time. So it'll defer him from talking to his wife for one night <laughs> about deer hunting. Yeah. Yeah. If exactly. you ever want to talk about I mean, deer hunting to someone, just text me, dude. I'm always down. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, that might, like I said, you definitely opened the door on that one and, and six months you might be like, what the hell? I don't know, <laughs> man. You ought to see our Snapchat group. It's, it's a non and never ending, uh, yeah, bullshit talking, deer talking, calling people out, contests. Yeah, I get called out every day. <laughs> I don't do anything. I yeah. just wake up yeah. and get called out. Perfect. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks again. We appreciate you coming on. This has been a blast. Yep. Good luck, man. Good luck yep, to thanks. you. What would you think of Cameron? Man, um, 
if we ever get to do any baiting in Illinois, yeah, dude, I'm gonna be coming back and listening to this episode again if I if we ever do. I know it's on the five year plan right now, mm-hmm. the last I heard, but I'm a uh, I don't know. I I don't know enough about it, and that's why it was cool to have someone on to teach us a little bit more about it. That's in it as much as he is. I mean, some people just go out and you know hit up the you know the normal, yeah. but he's using it to a whole nother level. Yeah, he's using it to actually like. You know, a lot. I feel like a lot of people use it to get picks at night, and get he's picks, using it to like hold deer, pattern deer, get inventory, and then trick deer, as which is insane. Right, and then that you know that's what he's doing. Yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you guys want to come on, we're gonna be sending out another listener episode soon. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. It depends on what we got going on, how much hunting <laughs> we want to do. <laughs> but uh, if you guys want to come on, we got a few guys that already asked to come on lined up. Um, if you want to guys come on, email us, uh, white to legacy podcast. No, white tail underscore legacy. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. There okay. You go. Yeah. White tail underscore. Legacy. If you have a VIP shout out, you yeah. can go to white tail legacy podcast.com. Yeah. Or, uh, Facebook message us, Instagram message us, whatever you guys would like. Yep. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, guess what? What's going to happen next week? <laughs> We're going to send another episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Remember, get out there and hunt. Make some memories. Try to leave a legacy. And white to legacy out.